Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. So are France back? They have followed up a comprehensive victory against England at Twickenham last week with another pretty comprehensive victory at home to Wales today. As for Wales, I'm going to go into this video why I think this game, even though it was a relatively heavy defeat, is the first time that if I was a Welsh fan, I'd have real hope moving forward. I think they have displayed something in this game which we haven't seen in their previous four fixtures in this Six Nations. I think there is finally something for them to potentially build upon. Subscribe to the channel and like the video and also drop a comment down below. What did you make of this game, these performances and where do you think France and Wales are really contrasting places really in terms of the context of the World Cup later this year. That is what our eyes are going to start turning towards now that the Six Nations is coming to an end. Loads to get into in the video so let's get into it. So France 41, Wales 28 was the final score. I actually thought this was a pretty interesting game though. I'm going to start with Wales because I thought for the first 20 minutes of this game this was a performance where Wales just showed us something. I think they came in with a really clear identified game plan and they were able to execute that tactically for I reckon 15 or 20 minutes or so where they were trying to keep the ball in play, they were trying to stretch France, they were trying to play it a lot in the French half and they were trying to use a lot of offloads as well, particularly around the fringes with their, with their forwards. That's kind of how Wales set up this game and as I say, I thought the first 20 minutes, they genuinely looked really, really good. They had a brilliant start to the game. They scored the first try. And it was kind of the opposite, actually, to what England did last week in terms of England, I think, had a game plan. It started to go wrong immediately and they had no way of changing the tide of, of where that match was heading. I think Wales got themselves into the lead and it just showed us something. It showed that they can have a game plan that... And that they're able to implement that tactically. Now, I know they ended up losing fairly comprehensively. But if you think about the rest of this Six Nations, the first three games, Wales had been absolutely aimless. You didn't know where they were going. Their selection seemed to be all over the place. And look, there's still some of those questions. You know, 20 minutes of a good performance in Paris doesn't fix those. They're still there. But I think this is the first time that they have shown us something. And actually, I think they probably almost take more out of this game than they do in victory over Italy the week before. Because even in that Italian game, you look at it and you looked at the opportunities Italy missed and you thought that maybe Wales got a little bit lucky. In this game against France, France comfortably the better side. We know that. We know that it is a, a long path forward for Wales before they are able to get back to anywhere near where they want to be. But I think this is a game that shows us that maybe there is life there. There is a heartbeat and let's see where they can go. So actually, I was encouraged by the first 20 minutes, but then it was just about French quality. I mean, my God, can this French team counter-attack? They're just able to punch holes. In fact, this is another game, if you look at the stats of the match, where in terms of territory and possession across the 80, Wales had more of it. And that's often been the case in this Six Nations. France kicked the ball away and they only really want to play in the opposition half. But when they do, they're able to strike and they're able to be so dangerous. And there was... Probably the middle third of that game, I would probably say, that France just had too much quality for Wales. Wales lost their way a little bit as well. Their own accuracy kind of let them down. You felt like they really lost the handle on the, on the game that they were able to get in the opening 20 minutes. But France are just packed full of quality. I think Dante coming back into the team the last two weeks has been a brilliant addition to them. He makes such an impact. You've got Penno on one wing, who in my last video I did, looking back at the Scotland-Italy game, I asked where Van der Merwe ranks in terms of wingers in the world right now. Is he one of the best? Damien Penno is absolutely in that category as well. We know all about Antoine Dupont. I think the back row has grown into this Six Nations as well. And France, two good victories now. You almost feel like they needed that dip, didn't they? Which was coming towards the end of the autumn. They were able to hold on and win all their games. Start of this Six Nations, they weren't quite as comprehensive. And then two really good victories over England and Wales, who I know are not in the best places at the moment. But even so, France have shown what they can do. And you almost feel like now they can build back into that World Cup on home soil. I guess the question really... From the World Cup perspective, and we'll get a better idea of this <clears throat> once the Rugby Championship gets underway, is who can beat France in France? I think if the World Cup was in any other nation, you'd look at that French team and you'd think, well, if they're on their day, of course, they would be contenders. But it's in France. Beating France in France is the question. Who has the capability to do that? There will be sides. Ireland at the moment will back themselves. 
The Springboks and the All Blacks, I'm pretty sure, would back themselves. But the point is, it's really not an easy task. That is a fascinating storyline heading into the World Cup later this year. So as I've mentioned already, Wales kind of lost their accuracy. France built a big lead and Wales were never able to chip away at it. And I think the score was 34-7 at one point. France built up that lead. It was 27 at half time. They increased that in the second half. And I jotted down on my notes, where's the fight from Wales? Well, then the fight came. And this is another reason why I think there are positives in this game from a Welsh perspective, because they scored three late tries. Roberts, Thomas Williams, the try at the end for Rio Dyer as well, which admittedly was some pretty poor French defence. I think Sean Edwards will be furious with that one. But Wales showed fight. So combine that with the fact that they had a game plan, then they had an identity, which they previously hadn't had, and they had fight. I just think it's something to build upon. I'll reiterate it's a long way to go. They've been beaten fairly comprehensively. Their only victory in the Six Nations is a pretty underwhelming one against the Italians away in Rome. But I come away from this game for the first time in the second era of Warren Gatton thinking, maybe there's just something there. But there are still concerns. The front row is still one for me. That was an area they were struggling throughout in this game. I don't know what their best combination is. I'm still not sure about the calibre of the front row and the scrummages that they have available to them at the moment. But let's see where they are able to go from here. The final question I jotted down is... Can France afford to give the best sides in the world more territory and possession? Because that is kind of a theme of this French side. As I've mentioned already, and I've mentioned it throughout this Six Nations, they often don't have as much of the possession. They regularly don't have as much of the territory. They kick the ball away a lot, but they're brilliant on the counter-attack. Can they afford to give those best sides in the world more of the ball and invite them onto them? Now, you would say, based upon certainly last year, where, look, they've beaten... South Africa, Australia, Ireland at home. Uh, if we want to look back further, the autumn before that, where they beat New Zealand at home, you would say that, yeah, maybe they can. But that would probably just be a slight question mark for me about this French team. But they, when they get going, France, they are so good to watch, aren't they? They can stretch teams. They can strike off first phase move, which once again they did here. They've got players all over the pitch that can cause you problems. When they go at your breakdown, again here, I think it was five or six penalties. They were able to win at the Welsh breakdown. That was a big, big area that I think if you are going to stop France, you have to win that battle of the breakdown. It was an area that England came miles out on the wrong side of the week before. Again, Wales found the same here because when they start winning that breakdown, they're turning ball over and that is when they are so dangerous. So I like this French team. I'm excited to to see how they build into a home world cup which is going to be phenomenal and just a final point really on this i think this super saturday is it's a bit of a shame the way the fixtures have fallen and that is completely luck of the draw but i do think it's a real shame that it wasn't wasn't scheduled to be Ireland and France in the final game on Super Saturday, just because they were clearly the two best teams coming into it that would have probably set up a just a scintillating Grand Slam decider. Whereas really, as much as we all love rugby and as much as I'm loving sitting at home and just watching back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back rugby matches, in terms of the drama of the competition, we're kind of just waiting till the last game to see if Ireland are able to win that Grand Slam. But that is maybe just a, a minor point and a thought for another day. So... Subscribe to the channel and like the video. And also, as always, most importantly, drop a comment down below. I will leave it there. What do you make of this game? But more importantly, what do you make of where these two teams are at the moment? Do you share my views that maybe for the first time in this Six Nations, I feel like there is something to feel really positive about for Wales? As for France, are they, are they back? It's only England and Wales they've beaten, but the performances have been pretty good. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right, I'll see you in the next one.